Welcome to Season 1, Episode 15 of the Home Health Care Today Show. I am your host, Dr. Clemon Moore. It is October, the fourth quarter of 2021. And if you recall, our inaugural episode was filmed and recorded on February 1st. On February 1st of this year, we were joined by Dr. Deidre Claverou. Dr. Deidre Claverou is a physician with Crossover Health, and she also serves as the medical director of American Advantage Home Care. Dr. Claverou, welcome back to our show. Thank you, I'm so excited to be back. Thanks, thanks for joining us again, doctor. Unfortunately, we are revisiting the same topic that we uh, focused on on February 1st, and that topic was COVID-19 and the vaccines and the impact and effect of COVID-19 on Metro Detroit and Metro Detroiters. We're facing the uh, pandemic still, and we're embarking upon the flu season of 2021 through 2022. So we want to dive into some uh, important questions and discussion with Dr. Claverou. Mm-hmm. So Dr. Claverou, back in February, it was, you know, chilly and cold, of course, here in, in Detroit. Um, we had uh, a rollout of the mm-hmm. vaccines uh, back in uh, December mm-hmm. for healthcare workers, right, and the most at-risk populations. So we were a few months into the vaccine rollout when we met in February. Yes. But, you know, we've had some ups and downs, mm-hmm. uh, fair to say, over the last, you know, eight months or so. Uh, we watched the Summer Olympics, you know, right. we didn't know if they were going to run. Uh, we watched March March Madness, you know, the mm-hmm. tournament, the college students, you know. So let's go there now, currently. Okay. We got through the Summer Olympics. Mm-hmm. It's football season again for uh, our Detroiters, so uh, right. <laughs> go Lions, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> but 10 to 11 months after vaccines were made available, mm-hmm. Dr. Claverou, how are we doing overall? Well, that's... Uh mixed bag because there are some communities that have a higher vaccination rate than others and they have um, less severe illness fewer cases i feel um, based on what i know the detroit population has the lowest vaccine rate for a variety of reasons yes and still you know people are at serious risk and that's evident by the hospitalizations that we're seeing as well as the severity of illness and the continued deaths. So is it as uncertain or as um, dire as it was a year ago? I say no because we have information, we have yes. resources, Absolutely. we have availability of the vaccine, but are we where I predicted we would be? At this time, again, the answer for me is no. No, no. Thank you, doctor. And and we're seeing that um, even though the vaccines have been made available, there are some issues that you cited uh, that uh, have led some folks to be reluctant uh, about being vaccinated or full vaccination. And then there's folks that contracted the virus, COVID-19, after being vaccinated. Uh, yes. Is it fair to say that for the folks that contracted it, generally speaking, after being vaccinated, Mm -hmm. were their cases much more milder and uh, a better chance of survival with being vaccinated? Yes, um, the research has shown that once people have received the vaccine and they're fully vaccinated, meaning two doses for Pfizer, two doses for Moderna, and one still for Johnson & Johnson, that even if they contracted the illness, their um, illness was milder and yes. did not require hospitalization. Yes. And that's the part that is the biggest, um, you know, the most important aspect because the virus itself, although it's still uncomfortable and yes. people still have symptoms that are, um, difficult to deal with 
if they can convalesce at home and and eventually recover, yes. that means that they're not in harm's way. It's not life threatening. And that's the difference. A, yes. a life threatening illness yes. versus a illness that is uncomfortable but definitely something that you can come out from under absolutely yes doctor so the fully vaccinated consists of the the two shots mm -hmm. but now we're hearing more about the booster the booster shot uh for healthcare workers seniors and at risk populations which is perhaps a third shot mm -hmm. the booster yes okay. so right now they're recommending that people 65 and older Yes. have the booster shot across the board and for other populations um, it a lot of times has to do with what your particular health conditions are if you are high risk yes. and that's something that you can talk about with your um, primary care physician I do agree with it being offered to our most vulnerable yes. first mm -hmm. and I'm I'm in agreement with how it's being rolled out. Cool. I do feel that over time, however, it'll become more commonplace for almost everybody to get that booster. Okay, this is good. Good information, doctor. Okay, prior to our, uh, our commercial here, I've been reading and hearing about a pill, a COVID-19 pill. So I know we talked about the vaccines, we talked about a, a third shot being the booster shot, and uh, you perceive at some point it'll be more readily available for many people to get that booster. But what about this pill? You know, is it, <laughs> is it like a supplement uh, at some point, a vitamin? So the pill, um, which is difficult to pronounce, but let me give it a try. Let's do it, Doc. Molnuprevavir. Molnuprevavir. Right. Yes. So this pill is being... Um, manufactured by the Merck company and it is being studied in those that are unvaccinated mm. so this is for your unvaccinated population and the hope of this pill or the purpose of this pill is to um, minimize the severity of COVID to the point where people do not have to be hospitalized if they were to contract this virus yes. so that same person mm -hmm. that would have been in an hospital room or an ICU setting may be that may be the person that can recuperate in their home if they contract the virus with this pill yes. now although there are no details on how long a person will be on this pill how many pills they'll take I have read information that it most likely will be a five-day course. Okay. Maybe taking it twice a day for a five-day course. Okay. Kind of reminds me of how people would use Tamavir uh -huh. if they had the flu and they were yes. treating it early. Got it. Okay, doctor, doctor. So, Dr. Cleveru, we're going to head to a commercial break. After our commercial break, we're going to dive into more topics, uh, masks, which we haven't covered, mm -hmm. uh, and then some of the vaccination mandates that we're seeing around the country. We'll be right back after a commercial. As Americans, we're defined by our grit, our toughness, our excellence, and our multiculturalism. But here in Detroit and Southeast Michigan, we are battle tested. That's our advantage. We've been hit rather hard by the pandemic and other health challenges. Allow American Advantage Home Care to provide skilled home care services for you in the comfort of your own home. We are Joint Commission accredited and CMS certified. Call us today. Welcome back to season one, episode 15 of the Home Health Care Today show. We are still joined here with Dr. Deidre Kleberu as we dive deeper into part two of a two-part series uh, focusing on COVID-19 vaccines in Metro Detroit. So Dr. Kleberu, we have seen various and varying mandates um, at the federal level for employers who have 100 or more employees, um, a mandate for vaccines. We've seen um, at the healthcare level for 
hospitals in the state of New York and California a requirement. We've even seen conversations and discussions at the public school level in terms of uh, mask, mask mandates and the like, as well as vaccine mandates. Mm -hmm. In Michigan, it seems as though we've been somewhat discretionary to an extent. You walk up to a Starbucks, there's a sign on the door that says masks are recommended um, for those that are unvaccinated, or mm -hmm. we see messages, if you have the following symptoms, don't come in our store, don't come into our, our facility. What are some of your thoughts, Dr. Claybaru, on the uh, mandates for vaccinations, masks, and then some of the discretionary practices that some states and, and organizations have? Well, that is a really interesting question, and it can <laughs> yes. be considered for some people a, oh, a controversial question. Certainly. And I think it's only because there's so many different messages surrounding it. Yes. So, for instance, um, if you're working here yes. and you have employees that have been documented to rec have received the vaccine yes. and they are complying with the recommendations of your organization, yes. then you may feel a layer of protection within these four walls because you have that information and yes. it's been verified. Absolutely. However, when you go into a public domain and the message is masks are recommended, yes. then first of all, it gives that power to each individual. It does. And you have no knowledge of what the vaccine status is no. with people you're coming in contact with. True. at that grocery store, at that movie theater, at that mall. Yes. So I'll tell you how I handle it. Yes. When I'm going into settings where I ha don't have that knowledge, and that means a lot of settings I do not have that knowledge, yes. and I especially find myself in a closed environment, mm -hmm. I wear my mask. Yes. Because for me, I feel it provides me that extra layer of protection and because I'm working with patients, mm -hmm. I feel it is my responsibility to do my best to protect them. Mm -hmm. And that's a small price for me to pay yes. to make sure that I'm not only protecting my patients, but my family. Yes. I look at it like I pay my auto insurance every month, mm -hmm. but I haven't had an accident and I don't know when. Yes. But I still pay it every month because any event that it does happen, I want to be protected. Absolutely. So my car is in no way near as important as a human life. Yes. And I would just prefer to take those precautions because it's not something that's difficult for me to do. Absolutely, Doctor. And Dr. Claywood, that is a, a great example and transition as we Think about a controlled environment versus an uncontrolled environment. So home health care, as an agency, we have the responsibility uh, and the honor to serve homebound patients in what is seemingly a controlled environment in the comfort of their own home. Granted that patients have taken necessary precautions, it's our job as an agency to ensure that we have equally taking precautions uh, by ensuring that um, our clinicians are, are vaccinated and also still wearing protective gear. So PPE, we're still wearing it, and it looks to me as though that's gonna be a continued norm, mm -hmm. right? Um, the transition then uh, from that controlled environment of home and in public space being somewhat uncontrolled and driving a car and the hazards and risks there Dr. Claver, we're going into the holiday season again, which is also flu season. Mm -hmm. And then there's a conversation about the variants. Holiday travel, uncontrolled. Airports, on the other hand, require masks. But once we get into some of those large family gatherings and the like for this season, what would you identify as some best practices or precautions for those that are electing to travel this holiday season, as well as to host guests during mm -hmm. the season? 
Yeah, that's a really good question because people are longing to connect with relatives and you know it's a really important time and you know making those um, connections can be good for the soul I totally yes. understand that mm -hmm. so I feel that if you're going to be traveling to someone's home and you're going to be in a um, closed environment with your family I would recommend get tested before yes. you go it's simple to get tested. You can go to a drugstore and get tested. Yes. You can go to your doctor's office and get a rapid test. It's not something that is um, a challenge anymore because when you're there in that environment, once you have your test, then you'll feel more comfortable and the other people will also feel comfortable. But you don't want to have a situation where s someone does have an exposure that yes. you're the source of that exposure right because that wouldn't feel very good and that would really negate the reason that you got together with your family yes. you want to have a good time you don't want to have a bad outcome <laughs> exactly. and just because you might navigate the virus well maybe you're a healthier person yes. not everyone at your family gathering is going to necessarily be in the best of health or have optimal health Absolutely. so i feel that getting that test will give you that um that knowledge that you're safe and nothing is a hundred percent but people always kind of get that mixed up they feel it has to be all or nothing True. tell me what in life is like that nothing. what is guaranteed <laughs> what yeah. is a surefire thing if yeah. we base everything on what we do or don't do if it was based on I want to guarantee, yes. then we would basically be immobilized. Totally. But it doesn't mean because you can't do everything that you can't do something. True. So you can still take that precaution mm -hmm. and um, go around your family feeling comfortable. And then while you're there in their midst, if you're you know traveling outside of your controlled environment, wear your mask when you go to the grocery store together. Yes. Wear your mask when you're going here or there so when you come back into the home you know that you've done whatever you can although it's not a hundred percent you've done your part to protect your family absolutely dr claver and that's what that's what we want to instill and want to leave with listeners and viewers of the show um taking personal responsibility uh even when traveling even when having a great time knowing that there are some consequences to irresponsible behavior. And they're not being 100% guaranteed that you won't contract or you won't share, but you want to do your best to, to own it, to, right. to have that responsibility. And I could see at some point our vaccination cards going digital, legitimate vaccination cards going <laughs> legitimate. And when we go to swipe and pay for things with, you know, uh, Google Wallet, you know, I could see at some point, you know, vaccination record being mm -hmm. connected to buying concert tickets, attending sporting events and the like. So, and if that, if we do see that idea carried out, you heard it first here on the Home Healthcare Today show. Right. <laughs> I totally agree with you because there are some, you know, very enclosed environments like cruise ships, for instance, you have to prove vaccination. Yes. But look how close that environment is i mean you are at sea yes sometimes far away from a land yes. and you know they're not giving you an option no. they're saying based on what this industry has been through and based on how many people were ill and lost their lives on in this environment we are not taking that chance and nope. if you don't want to comply guess what you don't have to go on a cruise totally agree totally yeah agree. that's what they're saying yes and, and we're seeing it with air travel as well you know mm -hmm. uh as we go through tsa and we get to our gates and and we board the planes mm -hmm. we are seeing some uh precaution definitely yes. precaution by the by the uh aircraft crew that say, hey, even if you're sleeping, keep your mask on yeah. and keep it on unless you're actively eating. So one pretzel, shoot a pretzel, <laughs> mask back on. And, right. and, and we definitely understand, we do. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Claverow, as we look for a silver lining in our, our last question here as we wrap up season one, episode 15, the 2022 
uh, outlook. Um, is there a silver lining? And what glimmers of hope are you seeing um, within the communities that you serve, uh, with patients and families, as related to a kindred sense or non-medical sense of immunity, if you will, uh, cohesiveness, collaboration, because a lot of what we see uh, through various sources tends to show human interaction in the most negative light in view of some of the PTA meetings <laughs> and the like, employers versus employees, <laughs> right. uh, political uh, disagreements from a socio-political uh, standpoint or perspective. Well, let's look for a silver lining. What are we seeing that's positive? <laughs> well, yes. I feel that <laughs> as time goes on for people that have been um, reluctant, you know what? They'll look at their friends and families as, okay, you're my guinea pig. Yes. You know, you took the vaccine yeah. back in December. You're still walking, talking. Yes. You're, you're not a, a variant or a mutant that I can't recognize. <laughs> so you're the best source of information I have about the safety profile, mm -hmm. and that'll make them feel more comfortable. Absolutely. Because you'll be around people that you know personally that have never that have not had a negative side effect yes. i think that speaks more volumes more than any research article yes i yes. think also having um, more options available for people is going to help too yes. some people don't like the vaccine but if they but if they get the illness, they'll they'll oh, they're okay with the monoclonal antibodies. Some people will not take the vaccine, but if they get ill, they may take the pill. Yes. So as you have more options for people, yes. they can they'll have a menu of things that they can choose from, and if there's some benefit for everyone on that menu. I think that you'll see a middle ground starting to form. Yes. And um, I think that's a, a good thing, you know? I agree. I agree. So that's what yes. I'm looking forward to. And I also can say that even though it's been a difficult road, yes. if I look back a year ago, I still I feel better about our prospects now. Likewise. And I feel better about the progress we made. And, you know, even though it may not be where we want to be, it's still progress. Yes. It's not the harrowing stories that you hear on the nightly news that True. the leading story is COVID every single night. Right. I mm -hmm. still think that we're not necessarily um, empathetic as we need to be to the healthcare workers on the front line. Yes. Because we may feel great, but they're still in the thick they're, of things. Absolutely. And we need to be mindful and respectful of that. Yes. And do our part so that when our 90 year old grandmother need, needs to go into the hospital for um, a heart attack or a fall or something, there's room for her Amen. because yes. the ER isn't full of people that um, have COVID. And we know that this could have this um, that could have been prevented, absolutely. You know, yeah. or at least been dealt with in a different setting than the hospital. Yes. So we have to take responsibility for that because we have to deal with more illnesses than just COVID. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, Dr. Clay. Well, that is an excellent summation. You know, to to shine light in a positive direction, and I think it's also valuable to to speak to. The variants, you know, the the mutations, and seeing that our advances in the development of the vaccines, therapies, approaches, and safeguards are indeed catching up, right? Mm -hmm. Catching up to the litany of the uh, the variants. So we're mm -hmm. not living in constant fear, mm -hmm. but we do acknowledge the the seriousness of COVID nineteen and the multiple variants, but are doing our best to protect our patients, yes. protect our employees, family members, and the uh, community at large here in Metro Detroit. Dr. Claveroo, as usual, this has been a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed speaking with you, and I hope that you know people will feel free to talk with their doctor and yes. you know get information based on fact and science, and you know don't be afraid to put your questions out there, and if you 
Um, there's lots of reading that even a person can do on their own. Yes. You know, information is available to everyone. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. C. Thank you.